Hey everyone and welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial we are going to make a wallet that is so fun, it is so quick, and it is so useful. You're going to want to make so many of these. Today we're going to make the mini Triskel wallet from Sonar Sewing Patterns. Now you might remember that we did the full size Triskel wallet previously. We had to get very creative with how we were piecing it all together, but it was a really enjoyable wallet to make. I love that these patterns are raw edge. I feel like this is a great way to try out raw edge patterns, to try out a wallet project. This is a great, it's, I would say beginner, yeah, I think it's a great beginner make, but it's also just a great one to just test materials out on. Like if you have new vinyl or new cork and you're like, I just kinda wanna see how it sews, I wanna see how it behaves, this is a great one to do it on because not only is it adorable and you could use it all the time if you sell these, I feel like this would be a good selling item. So let's walk through the wallet. So you can see we have a flap on the front here and then you just have just a plain back over here. We do have a couple of little D-rings on the side which are so cute and a wristlet strap. So you could wear this as a wristlet. You could, my thing I think would be so cute. It'd be like a chain, like a chain crossbody strap. And it's like, like for little kids and stuff or just, just for fun. Uh, it's like a wallet purse, which I think is so stinking cute. I have magnetic snaps on mine. I'm gonna continue using the magnetic snaps, but you don't have to use magnets if you don't want to. If you're not into magnets and wallets, that's okay. You can definitely use fashion snaps here instead. When we open it up, we have a lot going on in here. So this is a great, in my opinion, like travel wallet or a great wallet for kids. So let's start on this side over here first. We have a little slip pocket and then we have a clear little ID pocket. In the center here, we have a little zip pocket, which I love. I love when we have a zip pocket on a wallet. I really feel like we should always have a zip pocket on a wallet. I know a lot of wallets, or at least wallet patterns, won't include a zipper pocket, but I love a zipper pocket. And then on the other side, so we'll flip it this way, we have one, two, three card slot pockets and a slip pocket right here. And you can see for the D-rings, we're using corset rings. So corset, corset, <laughs> however you say it. Corset rings, which um, kind of remind me of like something you'd put on a sneaker. That's what somebody mentioned before. They're like, they're for shoes, uh, but they work great for this. So I feel like this is a great, great tool to use on a little make like this. This is a wallet that has a lot of structure. We have very particular stabilizer. Decoville Heavy is what I'm using to give this a really good shape. I'm gonna give you a lot of tips today on how to make sure everything stays lined up, how to make sure you don't move things around or switch things around and then sew the wrong thing because trust me, I did. I was using the seam ripper quite a bit purely because I just flipped something the wrong way at some point and I didn't catch it till way later. But I didn't have to replace anything. I just had to pull it apart and redo it and it was very quick, very easy. So this is a great learning pattern. So thank you so much to Sonar Sewing Patterns for allowing me to use your designs on the YouTube channel. I love these makes so much. I have another one I've been working on. I absolutely love raw edge projects. I really do. Um, you can see I'm not edge coating anything here, but if you wanted to edge coat this, this would look so professional. It all, on its own, I feel like it still looks very professional, but if you added just the layer of edge coating along the edges, it looks amazing and it's really not difficult at all to do, especially with edge coating. Edge coating is not difficult, it just takes time. Same with this, you have to be meticulous, you have to be precise with what you're doing, where you're cutting, how you're lining it up. But as long as you do that, it's not a, it's not something that's difficult by any means. If you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. If you see another pattern by Sonar that you would love for us to feature on the channel, please leave a comment down below with which pattern it is. I want to make them all. <laughs> I really do. They're all so, so cute. I know I keep sticking to kind of like the smaller wallets and things with Sonar, but I do want to get into some of the bigger items as well. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so for this little wallet, you're going to need a total of about a half a yard of material. This is going to be material for the exterior and the interior. Uh, this needs to be a raw edge material, like cork, faux leather, vinyl, something like that. I'm going to use a combination of different vinyls today. So I have two of these like fun, sparkly, iridescent vinyls that I'm going to be using for the inside of the wallet. And on the outside, which is really like the exterior, I'm going to use this fun embossed spider vinyl. <laughs> now, all this vinyl is more of a like a medium to lightweight. Nothing is too heavy, nothing is too thick, uh, but also nothing is like really stretchy. None of this is gonna be used for apparel or anything like that. Then you're gonna need about a fat quarter, I mean really just a small piece of material. 
um, of landscaping material. That's what the pattern calls for. So I'm actually using ripstop. This ripstop stuff is fantastic. It is available in all types of colors and all types of prints. Um, it doesn't fray. It is very lightweight, very thin. It's very crisp. So when you just kind of crease it, you don't have to iron it or anything, but you crease it, it holds its fold really well. It's absolutely perfect for card slots. And you're going to need a very small cut of material. I mean, really just like a four inch square or so of clear vinyl or mesh. I haven't actually tried using mesh on a card slot. Uh, this is for like the ID window, uh, but I'm going to use clear vinyl. But if you use mesh, let me know because I am interested in that. And finally, you're going to need, obviously not this much, uh, you're going to need a small cut of ultra firm stabilizer. So I'm using Decoville Heavy here and you need, again, like a, like a fat quarter of this. You're just going to need like a nice long strip that you're going to cut into smaller strips. This is going to give the wallet a lot of structure. And I, I would make sure, don't skip this. I know that this step can be a little difficult and we'll talk about that when we get to it, but don't skip this. You, you, need, you need the stabilizer. So here's our hardware. I'm going to use two magnetic snaps. Now you can use fashion snaps or magnetic snaps. I would not suggest the plastic cam snaps because I find like they don't hold very well um, when you have a lot of pressure pushed against them. And if you fill up your wallet, you'll notice that these snaps will unsnap. So for example, here's my finished wallet. And if you get this really full, this needs to be able to hold. Now the magnetic snaps I'm using, they have a strong hold. That's great. I know um, a lot of people don't like to use magnetic snaps with wallets, particularly because of the magnet and the credit card situation. I've never had any problem with these small magnetic snaps causing a problem with any of my credit cards or anything. But if you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. Just use the regular metal fashion snaps. That will also work great. I'm actually going to do kind of a combination. I'm going to use magnetic snaps, but I'm in today's tutorial, I think I'm going to install the male sides, which is on the flap here. I think I'm going to install those like you would a fashion snap so that the rivet side, because my magnetic snaps have a rivet on the back. Um, maybe I'll put those on the outside. We'll see, I'm still debating. And then you're gonna want two corset rings, totally optional, but it allows you to make your little wallet a wristlet. And you can see this is where they are right here. These little, little doohickeys here. Uh, they're attached using two rivets. So you can see it's just a little, it's like a little D-ring, easy to attach, looks really cute, really pretty on the outside as well. And then you can attach a little wristlet strap or even a crossbody strap, depending on how you wanna wear this. And then I have my bag tag as always. I'm gonna use a number three zipper today. So I have a small cut of my number three zipper and then a zipper pull to go with it and then a half inch swivel hook. So here's most of the other stuff we're gonna use today. Let's start over here on the left. We have the rivet press. This is gonna have my rivet dies in it. And then I also have my die set down here for my magnetic snaps. I love using magnetic snaps that have a die set because they don't have to worry about those prongs. Uh, flattening them out, rubbing against anything in the end, just a nice smooth back. And it's very, very quick and easy to install. Then I have a hole punch to go with installing all of these things. I have this awesome weighted seam roller. It's so pretty. This is from Wonderground Fabrics. This is really helpful whenever you have to get really crisp folds. So I just use it in a couple places, but I pretty much always have this next to me when I'm working on a project. Then I have my one inch by six inch roller as always. I have a couple marking tools, an air racing marking tool and a silver ink pen a lighter for cleaning up any loose threads, a stiletto. I use this at the sewing machine and I also use this to help tie off those threads and I'll show you how I do that. The needle I'm using today is a Microtex 8012. In the bobbin, I'll be using this Guterman polyester thread and then in the top, in the needle, I'll be using a Microtex 45 weight thread. This is from Saya Swag and it's color Calypso Blue. I have an X-Acto knife and you're gonna want an X-Acto knife today specifically for cutting out all those card slots and the ID window, scissors, aren't the best option for things like that. Then a healthy supply of double-sided tape. Now make sure this is double-sided tape you can sew over. We will be sewing over a lot of this today. And if you're using really tacky tape that's used for leather and things like that, you're gonna have a lot of problems because your needle is gonna get gummy and sticky and it's going to make the thread stick. It's going to make the thread unravel and knot. And you're gonna have all these problems and it's all because your needle got too sticky from the tape. So make sure it is tape you can sew over. And then lots and lots of plastic clips to hold everything together. Okay, now let's go over all of our pattern pieces and I'm gonna grab my finished wallet to help you visualize this as well. 
First we have the exterior. Not a whole lot to mark on the exterior. You're gonna wanna mark pretty much all these lines ahead of time. On the exterior, you can mark these folds. However, I found that sometimes my interior folds don't line up exactly with the exterior. So honestly, I didn't even use the exterior fold marks, but they are good guidelines. However, you will wanna mark where the female snaps go. So make sure you do that on the back. So here's my one cut of my exterior material, my little spiders, and on the back, somewhere over here, I have the marks for those snaps. Next, we have the interior pieces. The interior is actually broken up into two pieces. And so in today's tutorial, we're gonna use two different colors to really help show that. The interior top is the longer piece, and it's the one that's going to have the snaps on it. It's going to have the card slots, and it's gonna stop at the top of the zipper pocket. So from the zipper all the way here to the left, that's the interior top. You will wanna make sure you mark everything. You're gonna mark placement for the male snaps. Honestly, you don't need to mark placement for the earrings because we do those later. But first fold, second fold, third fold, fourth, fifth, and sixth folds, mark all those lines and their numbers. So you'll see on the back of mine, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure you mark those numbers. You're gonna need to be able to see those. Also make sure you mark placement for your card slots, okay? There's three. Just do it just like this. For me, all I did was poke a hole in the little dots on the ends of the card slots, drew those holes on the back here like this, and then I took my small ruler and connected each one of those dots with a straight line. Next, you're gonna have the interior bottom. The interior bottom is the other side, so it's gonna start at the top of our zipper here, gonna go down, and it's gonna be your little clear ID window and a little slip pocket all the way to the very end. This also has markings for the ID cutout, and then four folds, as well as your little slip for the ID cutout. So the ID cutout is a window like this, but to get the card in and out, there's a slip right at the top like that. Make sure you mark these on the back. When you're marking your ID window cutout, I suggest having the back of your material facing up, so your material is wrong side up, and your template is right side up. Mark it just like that. That way it's gonna align like the picture on the pattern. So for example, here's the one I did and I did that backwards the first time. So if you look at mine versus the cover photo on the pattern, my ID is upside down. So on the cover photo, the opening for the ID window is down here on the bottom, on mine it's on the top. Does it matter? I don't think so, but it's up to you. If you want it to be exactly like the pattern cover photo, you need to make sure the pattern piece is right side up, the interior bottom cut is wrong side up, and trace everything out like that. Just like I did on these card slots, I just marked the corners of this ID window, drew the dots for those four corners, and then used a ruler to connect all of them. Same with the little slit opening on the top here. Make sure again, one, two, three, four, you mark the numbers on those lines. Next up, let's go over our lining pieces. You're gonna have one longer strip of fabric. This is going to be for the folded bits for the card slots. So right here where you have your three card slots, we're just gonna take one piece, fold it back and forth, fold it back and forth, and that's gonna create the lining for those. Then you're gonna have a lining cut that's gonna go behind your clear window. So this can be visible in the end if you're using a totally clear vinyl. And then you're gonna have two cuts of material, and this is gonna be the lining for the little zipper pocket. Also, I just wanted to make note, you need to have this according fold template. This is gonna be really helpful when we're making the card slots. Um, so if you didn't print out a whole lot of these templates or anything, I would suggest you print this piece out. Okay, a couple little bits and bobs, a wristlet strap, totally optional. If you're like, this is just gonna be a wallet, I'm never gonna wear it as a wristlet. You don't have to make a wristlet strap, or if you have another option, like you're gonna use a little elastic bracelet, or you're gonna use a chain, um, you don't have to do this, but we're gonna make it today in the video. And then you're gonna have one cut of your clear vinyl or your mesh, and this is going to be for the ID window, and then just a couple of teeny tiny cuts here. These are for the zipper tabs, and these are gonna go on either side of the little zipper pocket up here on the ends. And finally, we have our cuts of stabilizers. So you're gonna have a cut for the back, a cut for the top, a cut for the inside, and then four cuts, which are going to be the little boxed angles. Um, make sure you mark on them what they all are. That's what I did, at least for the three bigger pieces here. So make sure you have this all organized. I'm not gonna be transferring these using heat. I am going to be transferring them to the material using tape. So if you're using Peltex or something, that's totally fine because I'm not heat transferring any of this stuff today. So let's get started with the interior top and we're going to work on those credit card slots. So on the back side here, remember we have all of our marks and I have three lines right here for credit card slots. Each line ends in a dot. On each one of those dots, I'm going to punch a hole. Now I'm using the smallest setting. I'm not sure what number that is. I believe that's a two. 
maybe two, um, smallest setting on my hole punch here and just one hole at each of those dots. So all six of them. And then once you have those six holes punched, you can use a straight edge or you can just use your line and you're gonna take your X-Acto knife and you're gonna cut right along that line. Now you can do this with a rotary cutter and a ruler if you prefer, or you can just very carefully use your X-Acto knife, or you can even use the ruler and the X-Acto knife. Just make sure you don't go past the dots, the little holes, okay? Just go all the way to them, but don't go past them. Okay, once you have those three slits done, let's flip this back over and look at the wrong side again. We're gonna add some double-sided tape down. So I'm gonna add double-sided tape underneath each one of these three slits and then over the very top one as well. So the top pocket is gonna be right underneath the number four line, okay? That's the top pocket. All right, so make sure you have your little accordion fold template and we're gonna take our lining material and we're gonna lay it right side down so that the long edge is going off towards the right. So you see I have my three pockets here on the left and then the left edge of the material, the very bottom, let's see, it's like this, it doesn't matter. But the bottom edge of our lining for those card slot pockets is going to go over all three of the slits. So you see, just like this. Hopefully you can visualize this. So remove the tape from the very bottom pocket. So this is gonna be underneath the third pocket, only that one. And then center your lining material over those three slits and make sure it's straight and add it on the tape. So it should look just like this. Now we're gonna flip this over so we're looking at the right side and underneath that third cut, we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I do suggest you leave the thread tails of the bobbin and the top thread long on both the beginning and the end so we can tie those off. All right, so once you have that done with it wrong side up, you can grab your bobbin threads and just pull gently on the bobbin thread and you'll see a little loop from the top thread kind of poke up on the back. Just use your stiletto to get that top thread all the way on the back. Do this at both the beginning and the end of your stitching. And then you can take those threads and I like to just tie them in three knots. So when you flip this over and you look at the front, you see you have a nice clean top stitch. Now you're gonna flip this back over to the wrong side, fold your lining back so it's right side up now and do a little finger press, or you can use your seam roller, this little guy here, and just kind of roll out right where you sewed. Get nice and flat. And then you're gonna take your template piece here and you're gonna line up the dash line with the third card slot space. Just line up the dash line with that slit so it does overhang. And then the larger part of the template is gonna be down covering the lining material. So then you're gonna take your lining material, fold it up, wrap it around this little template. So it's going up and it's wrong side up now and it's covering the card slots. Kind of lift it out of the way, remove the template, remove the paper from your tape and tape this down in place, just like that. So you should have a fold here on the left side on the bottom and it's taped down and it's all wrong side up and it's extending up to the top of this panel. So now we're gonna flip this back over so it's right side up. And now we're gonna top stitch right below the second cutout. So the middle cutout, top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, again, leaving the tails long and then tying off the beginning and the ends. So once you have that second pocket top stitched, we're gonna repeat for the top pocket. So once again, on the back side, fold the lining so that it's right side up and it's beneath that second opening. And again, if you wanna give all your creases a little press you can grab your template line up the dash line with a second pocket and then wrap the lining material around the bottom of your template and then just kind of hold that fold while you remove the template and then remove the tape that's underneath that first opening and then press your lining down so it's wrong side up and it's centered and straight and then flip this to the right side and now we're gonna top stitch underneath that first top opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and tie off your threads at the beginning and the end. All right, and then once you're done with that one, you're gonna flip this right side up again, give it a good press underneath that stitching area. If you wanna press down the bottom folds of your other pocket, you can. 
And now I'm going to use that same template here and I'm going to line it up with that mark. We're not top stitching anymore, but I'm just going to use that to help me wrap the lining around my template so I make sure I have the right depth. Now my lining piece is much longer than it needs to be. Um, that's fine. So remove the paper from your tape and then just fold up that lining piece. And we're not top stitching this, so peel it back and trim off any excess. Uh, I don't have it go past that fourth fold, so I'm just gonna trim right underneath it or right at that fourth fold like that. And now when you flip this over, you have your little card slot pockets. You can grab a credit card or something just to test it out, make sure it's the right depth. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. Okay, so now let's start making these little pockets. So using this fourth, fold mark. So where it says number four, we're going to fold our panel wrong sides together right on that mark. So I just kind of look at the side and pinch it. I'm going to grab some clips to help with that. I'm going to go to the other side and pinch there too where I can see the fold. And then just make sure when you're doing this, the sides line up. So I'm going to press this down and your little card slot pockets should be encased in this. I'm just gonna add clips to the sides. There you go. And then give that top fold, which is over the top of your three card slot pockets, give it a good press and use clips if you need to to hold it there. So this is what it should look like. And now we're gonna go top stitch along that fold at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then tie off the threads at the beginning and the end. Okay, once you have that top stitch, you're going to flip this so that the card slots are face down and then flip up this top section here. So this top section has nothing on the right side of it. Then on the back, find that number three fold and you're gonna fold right along that third fold so that the material is right sides together. And then you can kind of, so you can just press it along that third fold with your fingers and then you can flip this right side up to line it all up. And this creates your card slot pockets with a slip pocket on top. Now the pattern says to use tape or glue here. I'm just gonna use clips because to be honest, I somehow mess things up when it comes to getting everything the right size. And I end up having to kind of finagle things a bit and willy nilly them. So my fold might have to change a little bit at some point and that's perfectly fine. And we'll talk about that as we get towards the end of this. Cause if you have to kind of move folds around as long as they're not top stitched, you can do that. Okay, so this is what it should look like now. You have your three card slots and a slip pocket and your panel now is shorter. The pattern suggests what size it should be, but if it's not exactly that, that's okay. But it should be close to it. Okay, you can set this to the side now. Now let's work on this interior bottom cut, specifically the ID window. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and I'm gonna cut out my little ID window and I'm gonna cut out the insert for it. So starting with the window, I'm just gonna carefully use my X-Acto knife to cut along the rectangle. Okay, and once you have that rectangle cut out, then you can also just cut along the opening for the card there at the top. And I should have done this before I cut along that opening, but if you want to kind of go with the card slots and do the little hole punch at the ends of that slit, you can. So it's easier if you do this before you cut it, but either way it'll work. So this is what it looks like on the front. If you see, I have so many wobbly lines. So I think I'm gonna actually grab my ruler and I'm gonna try to clean up these wobbly lines just a little bit. Okay, and if you're edge coating, you can edge coat the inside of this opening now. I'm not edge coating, but I still do like to kind of clean up the edges by just running a lighter around them so they're not so fuzzy. So now we're gonna attach all of the pieces for this window. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna top stitch right underneath this top slit right here. This is gonna be the opening for the card when you're inserting it, so like your ID or whatever. Um, but because the card slots on the other side of the wallet have a top stitching beneath that mark, I'm gonna go ahead and add a top stitching beneath this mark as well at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, tying off the ends, just to make sure it's all kind of cohesive and looks the same. It serves no purpose, it's just decorative. All right, so that's top stitch. So now we're gonna work on the clear vinyl piece and you wanna attach the clear vinyl on the wrong side with both pieces wrong side up just like this. Now I'm gonna be honest, my machine is not happy with the double-sided tape that I'm using. So I'm gonna try using this glue stick. This is a glue stick that I typically use with quilt cotton, specifically when I'm doing English paper piecing, uh, but I'm gonna give it a try. So I'm just laying some glue around the outer edge of the rectangle 
and then I'm doing this on the wrong side of my material and then I take my clear vinyl and lay it right side down, wrong side up, so that it's overhanging all four edges by about a quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna use my little press here to press it down onto that glue. And it's not as adhesive as my double-sided tape, but I think it's still gonna work. And hopefully my machine is more okay with that. <laughs> it did not like the double-sided tape today for some reason. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch along all four edges of this rectangle just outside of it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I like to start on one of the bottom corners, leave the tails long, and then cut them down, tie them off at the end. Okay, so the glue worked really well, so I'm gonna try that again for the other part. So now I'm gonna add glue around the outside of that clear vinyl along all the edges, and then also along the top over the opening for that, so this is again on the wrong side, and then I'm gonna grab the lining piece for our pocket and we're gonna lay it over everything. So it should completely cover the back of the clear pocket and it should cover the top slit on the very top over there. Once again, I'm just gonna give it a little press with my tool. Okay, we don't top stitch this down, so make sure the glue is nice and dry before you move on. All right, so once you have it attached and the glue is dry or use tape, now, on this third line right here, you're gonna fold this all wrong side together. So that should be right at the midpoint. So just fold the whole panel in half, wrong sides together. And then you can add clips along the sides and also along that fold. Once you have it clipped, we're gonna top stitch just along that fold at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and then make sure you tie off the threads at the beginning and the end. Okay, once you have that full top stitch, you're gonna lay your ID window portion face down and then you're gonna find the fourth line. So it's on the top flap here where there's nothing on the top side of this, and there's that fourth line. You're going to press along that fourth line so that your material is right sides together. And that fourth line matches up with the second line. Again, if it doesn't later, that's okay. So now we're gonna flip this to the right side after you give that a good press. And you should see you have like a little slip pocket underneath your ID pocket. You can use tape or glue on the sides if you want. I am only gonna use clips because once again, I might have to move some of the stuff around a little bit, which means this little slip pocket might have to be smaller or bigger than it currently is later, which is totally fine. I'm just focused on the edges here. Okay, the pattern suggests how tall this should be. Now you can go ahead and check that. If it's not exact, that's okay. We can finish it later, but it should be close to what the measurement says in the pattern. So now let's work on our little zipper. If you haven't already, go ahead and attach your zipper to the zipper tape. And with zipper tape, you always wanna melt down the ends of it so it doesn't fray. So now I'm gonna grab a small ruler and I'm gonna grab some double-sided tape. I'm gonna grab a teeny tiny piece of double-sided tape and I'm gonna add it right on each short edge of my zipper tape. Okay, so now here's the thing. In the end, you want the length of this with the tabs to be four and a half inches long. So I have my little ruler here and my zipper cut is four inches long. So I'm going to center this at the quarter inch mark and at the four and one quarter inch mark. So that way it's still four inches long, but then I have it spaced out. So then starting on the left side over here, I'm gonna remove the paper from the tape and then I'm gonna take one of my little zipper tabs and just facing right side up, I'm going to overlap it on my zipper so that the left edge of the zipper tab is matched up with the edge of my ruler and it's just gonna overhang the zipper just like that. So if you have to take it off and readjust, you can. Since I'm using a number three zipper, it's a little bit wider than my zipper tape, that's okay. So now, once again, I'm gonna line this all up and now I'm making sure that the left edge where my zipper tab is is lined up right with the edge of my ruler. And then I'm gonna take the paper off the other end of the zipper tape, lining this up, and I'm gonna use the other little zipper tab and line it up right at the four and a half inch mark so that the total length of this is four and a half and however much it overhangs the zipper tape is how much it overhangs. And if it's just a teeny tiny bit longer than four and a half inches, that's totally fine. We can trim it down later. All right, so once you have it in place, we're gonna top stitch along the inner edges of each of these zipper tabs at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold them in place. So once your zipper's all prepped, we're gonna attach it to the panels. And you see it's gonna go right in the middle. I forgot which way though, let me check. <laughs> so if you need to, make sure you look at your template and see which side is going to be the zipper side. On the left over here, we have the interior top. The interior top has the card slot pockets facing up and then the card slot pockets are opening towards the left, away from the zipper. 
Then we have the zipper in the middle, and then we have the interior bottom, and the interior bottom has the ID window. So the ID window where it's clipped, glued, taped to the little slip pocket over here is on the right, and then the little extra bit with nothing going on, that's on the left closer to the zipper, and the zipper's right in between them. I will tell you, I installed this side, the ID window side, incorrectly the first time, so don't do what I did. We're gonna do it right this time. So now when the zipper closes, I want it to go towards the left when the card slots are facing me. So when I'm using this wallet and I have the card slots facing up like this, I want this zipper to close towards the left. So I'm going to focus on that first, which in, this is the interior top, which is how we're gonna start. Now you're probably gonna wanna use some double-sided tape here, and I'm gonna add it right along the edge. This thing's dirty. Right along the very, very edge of my zipper tape. I mean the very, very edge and over the zipper tabs. You notice I haven't trimmed down the width of my zipper tabs yet. I might not. You can if you want to, but they're so small that I don't think they are really gonna cause a problem. So then with the zipper right side up and when the zipper closes, it goes towards the left and then we have our interior top right side up and we have the card slots facing up and away from us. We're gonna take the paper off our double-sided tape or use your glue stick and we're gonna overlay that bottom edge over our zipper tape by a quarter of an inch. So now, with it taped or glued in place, don't stitch anything yet, you're gonna flip this over so you're looking at the wrong side of your material. And then we're gonna grab our zipper pocket lining panels. And so I'm looking at the top of my zipper tape here, right? So when I flip this over, the top of my zipper tape on the wrong side is the part that's taped in place. I'm gonna grab my lining panel and I'm gonna lay it right side down over the back of my zipper tape, just like this, see? And it's gonna overhang the bottom. So it's not overhanging the material, it's going over the zipper and overhanging the bottom. Again, if you wanna use double-sided tape here, you can. I'm gonna try using paper tape for this step because once we start layering up that double-sided tape, things get tricky in my sewing machine. And you'll notice that the zipper lining panel is not the same width as the exterior. It's not supposed to, so do your best to center it. I'm just eyeballing it. You just need that to stay in place so it doesn't move around because we're not gonna see it when we're sewing. Okay, so you see how this is? That zipper lining panel is overhanging the bottom edge here and it's lined up with the edge of the zipper tape. We're gonna flip this back over and we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along this edge on our exterior panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance Make sure you tie off the threads at the beginning and the end or backstitch, whatever one, whichever one you're more comfortable with. All right, that paper tape worked out well for me. It was not nearly as sticky as the double-sided tape, so it's all a learning experience. If you do find that your needle is getting super mucked up and your thread is shredding, it, and it's because of the double-sided tape, my suggestion, and you might've seen me do it in some of the other clips, is I just have a rag and some rubbing alcohol next to me, and I'll just wipe down the needle with some rubbing alcohol and then continue stitching. Like I'll just lift up the needle in the middle of a seam and just wipe it down and then continue stitching. You can always do that. All right, so once you have this stitched in place, you're going to fold the lining back so it's right side up on the wrong side of the zipper. See, just like this. And if you want, you can give it a little press. There you go. If you also are concerned about this getting caught in the zipper, you could add a little piece of double-sided tape on the back here to hold it down. I'll show you how to do that. Not the whole length of it, just like the center is what I would do, especially if you have some really sticky double-sided tape that you know will last a long time. You can just add it in the middle here and then take the paper off and fold this back and it will just help keep it out of the zipper. But again, it's gonna depend on the material you're using. If you're using the ripstop, you're not gonna have a problem. Quill cotton might be a little bit different. Okay, so now we're gonna repeat that on the other side. So let's make sure we have everything laid out correctly. So once again, we're gonna lay out the bottom panel, which is the green vinyl, over here on the left with the zipper in the middle. Zipper's closing, going down. Again, just because of orientation in the end, I want it to go with my card slots. Honestly, if it closes up or down, I think it's gonna be fine. Now we're gonna take the interior top, which is the white vinyl, and we have the big open space here on the left, and we have the card slot and the little slip pocket over here on the right. And we're gonna just overlap the zipper by a quarter of an inch and tape it down just like we did on the other side with that end of our interior top. So you see once again, I just put that double-sided tape right on the edge and my double-sided tape is a quarter inch wide. So when I take the paper off, 
and I overlap my white vinyl, I'm just lining it up on the very inner edge of my double-sided tape, and that's how I know it's on there at a quarter of an inch. Okay, and you can see my zipper is just a teeny tiny, I mean like a six, less than a sixteenth of an inch longer than it needs to be, and that's perfectly fine. Just do your best to make sure the lines, the outer edges of both the interior top and the interior bottom line up. So if you need to move things around, do that. Okay, so once that's stuck in place, we're gonna flip this over and look at the wrong side of the entire unit, and we're gonna take our remaining lining zipper panel, and we're gonna lay it right side down so it's right sides together with the other zipper lining panel, and we're gonna line it up on the right edge of our zipper tape over here, just right on the edge, and make sure the two short edges are lined up with the other two short edges on the other lining panel. And then once again, I'm just gonna use my paper tape for this. I'm just gonna tape this down with a tape that I know does not make my needle upset, just to hold it in place, there we go. So now we're gonna flip this back over and we're going to top stitch along the other edge now of our zipper tape at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, tying off the threads at the beginning and the end or back stitching, whichever one you prefer. Alrighty, so looking at the back side, we're going to flip that lining right side up, give it a press. Once again, if you want to use tape to hold it down, you definitely can, just like right along the edge of the seam over here just to hold it back. Okay, so let's look at the front. This is how we have it on the front, isn't it cute? And I used two different vinyl colors so that you could easily see what was going on. I know it can get confusing. So let's flip it back over to the back side and let's close up this lining panel. So we're going to pull both of our lining panels up and if you need to remove it from that double-sided tape for a moment, you can. And we're going to clip along the bottom corners, bottom edge, and the sides. And then pushing the rest of the material out of the way so that the zipper lining panels are on their own over here on the right. We're going to just stitch about a quarter of an inch seam allowance along the sides and the bottom edge. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. Get as close as you can to the zipper up top, but don't worry if you don't get all the way there. Um, and if you have to kind of rotate your material around when you're sewing, like sometimes I just do the bottom edge and then do the side edges separately instead of all in one go so that I'm, I'm sewing towards the zipper each time and that allows me to get closer so I can really close the hole on the sides. Just take your time with this. Okay, so this is what it should look like on the back. It's kind of sticking up. Doesn't matter if that's a mess, no one sees it. So I'm gonna flip this over. So now we're going to fold along the zipper. So pull the zipper up and fold the zipper tabs in half so the zipper teeth are on the very, very top here. Line up the edges. I'm gonna grab some clips to hold this down. I'm just gonna clip along the sides where these two zipper exterior panels are coming together. I'm doing my best to line up the top edge of each of the interior panels so that they meet up in the right spot. Take your time here, make sure everything is straight. I know if you're like me and you're using clips and not tape, you got clips everywhere and it's okay. But this is what it should look like now. You see how it's just kind of sticking straight up? I mean, it might be a little wobbly, that's okay. But this is what it looks like. Let me flip it the way we were looking at it before. And I'll flip further down. So you see that? Zipper is like right, it's just facing up, right? Facing up. And then when we look at the wrong side of this, you see I have a line number six and a line number one on the two different panels, they should pretty much match up or get very close to one another, okay? They should match up like that. Okay, so now we're gonna kind of close off the zipper pocket because we don't sew the zipper pocket in the end. So we're gonna do that now. So make sure everything is straight. Really take your time to make sure you don't have any little weird lumps or bumps anywhere. Give it a good look. And if you need to unclip, all of this, you can unclip all this and draw this line and then come back and finish it. But what we wanna do now is we're gonna measure three inches from the edge of the material. So the edge of the material, not the zipper teeth, the top edge of the material, measure three inches down from there and draw a straight line dividing the interior panel, okay? So it's gonna be parallel to your zipper. Okay, so can you see this gray line right here? I use my silver ring pin for this. That's my straight line. You see how I have the ID window and then I also have the card slot piece. Those are all facing away. They're on the left, they're facing away from the zipper. I'm only focusing on my zipper pocket right now. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and starting at the top where the top stitching is, we're gonna top stitch along the side at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're gonna go over our marked line 
and then we're going to top stitch up the other side at an eighth of an inch seam allowance stopping when we get to the top stitching on the top of the material you don't have to sew over the zipper tabs okay if you want to go for it but you you just got to get close to them it's all tight enough that you don't have to worry about anything like that take your time here tie off the threads in the end or back stitch whichever one you're more comfortable with okie dokie so when you open this up this is what we have it's looking cute it's looking so cute i love this so now this is your entire interior panel the pattern does suggest about what size this should be make sure it's close to that okay you can kind of you have a little bit of wiggle room here because you can kind of pinch this up smaller if you need it or you can kind of widen it out but where that stitch is you can't really widen it out more than that so if you are like wow this is a lot shorter than it's supposed to be you're gonna have to do some finagling which you definitely can because you still have these two folds here that you could kind of spread a little bit further we'll get it okay don't worry about it Okay, so now we're gonna work on the exterior panel for just a moment. I'm gonna attach my bag tag and we're also gonna do the magnetic snaps. I am installing the magnetic snaps, but I'm gonna use the instructions that go with the fashion snaps because I'm gonna have it, it's kind of a mix of both because my magnetic snaps have a rivet back. So I can, ha I can have the back of them exposed, which is nice. But first I'm gonna work on my bag tag. Now you can see, I think I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm gonna attach my bag tag to the front flap just like this. And this one is one inch up from the top flap portion. So when you're installing this, just remember it's not the same side as where you have your dots for your magnetic snaps. So the magnetic snaps here will be considered the bottom and they'll go up like this. And then this here is the top. So this is where I want to install my tag. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape to put on the back of my bag tag. And then I'm gonna measure one inch up from the flap section. So one inch up and centered. And I'm gonna place my bag tag there. All right, that looks cool. <laughs> I like it. It's so moody, I love it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go and top stitch around all four edges of my bag tag and an eighth of an inch seam allowance tying off the threads on the back. Okay, so now I'm going to install the female snaps for my magnetic snaps on my exterior only, and then I'll install the male snaps in the very end, which I kind of like doing anyways, because then I make sure they're in the right spot. So I already have the marks on here, I think, for my female snaps. It's very hard to see on this material. So now I'm gonna grab my little hole punch, and I'm gonna punch a hole where those marks are. And you know what, I got a couple of pieces of scrap Decoville Heavy here. I'm gonna attach those as well, because this vinyl isn't very thick, and I will be attaching more stabilizer, but I need it to be attached with the snap. So I'm gonna grab my female snap and on the right side of the material, I'm going to insert it just like that. And I'm gonna flip it over to the back, add a little piece of Decoville Heavy over it, and then grab the rivet and just snap it on. So I'm gonna do that for both of these female snaps. So those are snapped in place. Now we need to press them. So this die set is so easy to use. I love it. So you're going to have the top die, which is what screws in in your rivet press, and that's going to go with the rivet. So I'm going to install that. And the bottom dies are nice because they just pop in and out on the bottom of your rivet press. So since I'm doing the female one, I need the one that kind of looks like the male snap. See, since it, it's going to go with it. So I'm just going to plop that in place, put the other one to the side, flip my material so it's rivet side up, snap it into place with that bottom die and press down. And how easy is that? Nice and secure, never coming out. I love it. It's so much easier than the prongs. Okay, so those are ready to go. So now we're gonna put it all together, but first we gotta put the stabilizer in there. And I think this is where people start getting a little concerned. So let's talk through it. We're gonna grab some tape and our stabilizer and our exterior and interior panels. So if it's helpful, grab your two template pieces that say top flap, okay? So you have your exterior piece here and it says top flap and you have your interior piece here that says flap. We wanna make sure that they both end up on the same spot. So this is what I do, I just kinda keep grabbing these. So we're gonna lay our exterior so it's right side down, wrong side up, just like this. And I'm gonna angle this so that the top flap is on the top and the bottom has the rivets, just like this. Okay, and then we're gonna grab our interior panel. And if you have the magnetic snaps, you'll have the male snaps up here. If you don't, you'll have the markings at least for it. So look for where the markings are because that's also your top flap. So that's gonna go up just like this 
with your card slot pocket and then your zipper pocket and then your clear ID window. This is how it's going to be in the end. Make sure you can stretch your material to fit your exterior. Now I got very lucky because this has never happened to me before. It all fits, which it kind of is unheard of for me. If it's too short, you have a couple options, but first we're gonna do the Decoville Heavy, okay? So this is what it should look like, because then if you want to just give it a little faux look, it's not gonna be perfect right now, but this part will fold up, this part will fold down, and there's your wallet. Now, let me just tell you this. The Decoville Heavy gives it an amazing shape. I mean, look at this sucker. This is so cool. It's such a sweet shape. Very, very structured. Lots of, you know, detail. If you can't make that work, and, and I just, I'm just saying that because sometimes things don't line up right. Sometimes maybe you sewed something wrong and you're like, dang it, I don't want to take the whole thing apart or start from the beginning. You don't have to add the Decoville Heavy, especially if you're just starting out. If you're worried about this, try it. But if you're like, this is not working, this is what it looks like without the Decoville Heavy, okay? You'll have your snaps and it is a much softer look. It is more of a rolled out. It doesn't have the structure because it doesn't have the stabilizer, but it's still really cool. And if you want it to be more smushy, then don't put the Decoville Heavy in there. So I just, I just wanna make sure you, you didn't do all that work and then realize you made a mistake and then now you can't do anything with it, okay? You can finish it like this. I just want you to know that. All right, I'm getting off my soapbox. So let's look at the back of our interior panel. So let's get the exterior panel out of the way. And we're just gonna focus on the back of the interior panel. And we're gonna work on our little Decoville Heavy here. So this is how it's gonna go. We have our top panel that's gonna go on the top where the top panel is here, where our number one is, right up there. And then we have our back, it's gonna go beneath that. And between that, we're gonna have two layers of our boxed edge, just like that. And then underneath the back, we're gonna have two more layers of the boxed edge, and then we're gonna have the inside. This is how these are gonna go onto here. Now let's see where they go. First, we're gonna do the top. And what I like to do is grab a ruler and an air racing marker, and I'm gonna mark a quarter of an inch along the sides and the short edge for this top piece to make sure it's centered. Okay, so here's my top piece, and I want it to be lined up with those quarter inch marks on the top corners by the edge, just like this. It doesn't need to touch this number one line. It's actually preferable that it does not actually touch that line or overlap it, okay? It should be slightly smaller than that. So I'm gonna grab double-sided tape and I'm just gonna add some double-sided tape to the back of my stabilizer. I mean, if you wanted to heat fuse it, you could. I wouldn't suggest heat fusing just yet because if you find out you have to make some adjustments somewhere, um, it's gonna be very hard to take it off if you have it fused with heat. So I just put a few pieces of tape. I'm gonna remove the paper from each of these pieces of tape. And then we're just gonna tape this. Again, lining it up with those quarter inch marks closer to the raw edge and the sides. There we go. And that's good if there's a little gap there. Okay, so now let's do the next part, which is going to be the boxed edge. So you have two cuts of your skinny Decoville Heavy for that. We're going to tape these together. So they're layered up. Just tape them together, exactly. Okay, and then we'll add our tape to the bottom of our stabilizer. And then between numbers one and two. So we have number one, which is right next to the top stabilizer, and then we have number two. This is gonna go right in there. Now it is gonna touch the lines of one and two because it's the exact same width but it needs to be right in there. So I'm gonna take my paper off and then make sure it's a quarter inch in from each of the sides because we don't wanna sew over this in the end. There we go. Perfect, all right, two done. Now I gotta do the back. You can see I still have my clips here. I know it gets a little, little crazy, that's okay. Okay, so now this back piece, don't let this confuse you because it did for me, I was like, it's too big. It does. It goes past three. It's supposed to go past three. It's gonna lay between this edge right here beneath your boxed piece that we just put and number five, okay? So not three, five. So it's gonna overlap that three fold, that's okay. So it's gonna go just like this. Again, make sure it is a quarter inch in from the sides and do your best to make sure it's not actually touching the numbers for, well, let's see, two and five. 
Um, if it if it is, that's okay, but you don't want it to overlap any of your other stabilizers. So let's put some tape on the back of this one. Just do your best to flatten this out as best you can. If you use clips, you're gonna need to move them out of the way a bit for this step. And if you need to, we have that zipper pocket here. You can move that down so it's not in your way. So you can flatten this out better. And then remove the paper from your tape. And if you find that it's like, there's no way, my it's too close, it's too small or anything like that, you can unclip where this fold is over here for that pocket and you can spread it out more. So you can make this fold right here move, right? So you can spread this and the fold kind of goes up a little bit. The pocket's not as deep if you do that but you can spread things around, just what I did on the first one, so that you can get this piece of stabilizer to fit. And I'm gonna save the next boxed bottom for the end, because that one's a little, a little tricky. It goes right over the zipper. So now we're gonna move on to the inside piece. So once again, I just kind of mark the bottom corner here, so it's a quarter of an inch from the short edge and then a quarter of an inch on the side a little bit. And then I put my tape on the back of my Decovo Heavy, and I'm just gonna take the paper off of it, and I'm gonna line it up using those corner marks. There we go. And then once again, it should come up just to the edge of that fold. So do you see here? You see that little fold right there? It shouldn't go all the way to the fold. It should just meet up with it. And then the last piece is doubling up our boxed bottom edge here and just smushing that in between. So for this one, you might kind of have to open things up a little bit, move things around. I find that this one is probably the trickiest one because it's not quite wide enough, but if you move it all up and down, you'll see you can fit it in there. So I'm gonna tape these in place. Okay, so I kind of lift it up, make sure it's in that space. There we go. Move stuff around. All right, there we go. So this is how it's gonna look on the back. And when you fold it in, it folds just like this. Be careful not to lose any of your tape or anything, but see how it folds just like that? All right, now we just gotta sew it, which is actually not that bad. So grab your exterior panel, lay it wrong side up with the top flat part on the top and then the magnetic stamps on the bottom. Grab your interior, facing it right side up with top flap on the top and the zipper and the ID on the bottom. And now we're just gonna go around lining up all the edges. So I start with the corners first, just and then just work my way around. If I have one panel that's a little bit bigger than the other panel, I can trim that down later. But to start with, this is how I like to start. And remember, I didn't do the markings on the back of the exterior panel. If you did, you can match up your markings with your interior panel to the markings on the exterior panel, and that's probably gonna be a good way to make sure everything is exactly where it needs to go but I am going to just use the clips here to help me with this. Make sure if you clip the sides where your slip pockets are, you can you keep them clipped like that. Don't open them up. Um, if you tape them, then you're good. But the hardest part here is making sure all of the edges line up. So for example, right here, we have the exterior edge, we have the fold from the slip pocket, and then we have just like the interior bit here. We have four layers. We need to make sure they all match up because if one bit is down too far, you're not gonna catch it when you sew. And that would not be good. So I'm using a lot of clips. Okay, once you have everything clipped, make sure, just double check it all looks right. It's not gonna attach because of all the clips, but make sure it all looks correct. And everything is where it's supposed to be. Nothing's moved around. Now, your bobbin thread is gonna show on the exterior here. We do need to sew this with the lining side up or the interior side up. So if you have a bobbin thread that you don't want to be seen, you need to change that out now because the bobbin's what you're gonna see on the exterior here. We're gonna sew this in two sections. We're gonna sew on one side of the zipper and then we're gonna sew on the other side of the zipper. And this actually makes it a lot easier to work with. So we can start on the bigger section, which is where the card slots are. We're gonna top stitch around the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then when you're stitching, just stitch as close as you can to the bottom of this pocket here. Um, you can stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the stitching you already have when you close this up just as close as you can get. And I do prefer to sew with a zipper foot here, but honestly, it's really not necessary because I'm gonna be sewing with the zipper foot on top of the zipper pocket, not butting up against it. So take your time. I like to start and stop by the bottom of the zipper pocket, and then I'm gonna tie my threads off over there as well. All right, we got that top stitch. Let's look at the right side. Oh yeah, that looks cool. So you see, it's gonna fold down just like that. 
Just making sure all my stabilizer is where it was before. It's looking so good. So now we're gonna repeat that on the other side. So flip the zipper to the other side. And uh, once again, I'm gonna start close to the zipper. I'm probably about an eighth of an inch away from the top stitching on the bottom of the zipper panel. And I'm just gonna top stitch around all the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I do like to back stitch over the tops of the slip pockets just to make sure those have a little bit extra security. Um, but yeah, and then I'm just gonna tie off the threads. And again, I'm gonna start and stop by the zipper pocket because I feel like it's a little bit more hidden over there, but wherever you wanna start and stop. Okay, so once you have it all top stitched, this is how it should look. It should fold neatly. If you use the stabilizer, look at how stinking cute that is. And now we just have to do the snaps. So the placement for the snaps on the flap are pretty high, but that's a good thing because when you fill this up, you want it to kind of expand. So if we were to kind of tighten this up when it's empty and place our next snaps so that it's tight, when you fill it up, it might not hold it. So I'm gonna stick with the pattern on placement for these snaps. So I'm just gonna grab the pattern piece and I'm just gonna cover the right side of the exterior. And then I'm just going to mark where the snap placement marks are with a vinyl pen. And that looks good. And I'm just gonna give it a double check. So I'm just gonna kind of line up those marks to the best of my ability. I think that'll be good. So I've got my snaps and my hole punching set and everything. So I'm gonna punch out the holes where I marked and I'm punching through the exterior and the interior. And then the male part of the snap goes on the interior side and then the rivet part goes on the exterior. And so this is something you could have done this earlier if you didn't want the back rivet part, if you were using snaps like mine. Um, if you didn't want those seen, you could have just added this to the interior portion earlier, but I like it seen. Just make sure it all lines up. Perfect. So cute, right? My goodness, so cute, so cute. All right, let's press these in place. So I switched out my bottom die already to go with the male snaps. I'm just gonna put this in rivet side up and press down, and there we go. Snaps are done. How easy is that? So cute. So now let's install these little corset rings and we do this using rivets. This is optional. If you're happy with the wallet as is, then you're done. Then you're good to go. But we're gonna, I'm gonna do the corset rings and these are gonna go on the inside of the wallet on the stabilizer for the box top by the flap. So right here is where we want them to go. So I'm actually gonna look at this from the top and I'm gonna mark placement for these. So on this top boxed edge where that stabilizer is, I'm going to center my ruler and I'm gonna mark in 3 eighths of an inch from the edge. All right, once I'm happy with that placement, I'm gonna use my hole punch to punch a hole where those marks are. And then I'm gonna flip this to the interior side. And you're gonna take one of your corset rings and you're gonna lay right side up. The back kind of looks almost like a soda pop tab, you know, like a Coke can tab. So we're gonna, the smooth side is the right side up. So we're gonna have it right side up. We're gonna lay it over the hole on the interior side, insert, your rivet through the hole and through the hole in your corset ring, and then put the cap on the exterior side. So the D-ring portion of this little corset ring should be extending over the edge, just like that. How cute is that? Isn't it an easy way to add a little tiny D-ring? I love it. And since I used rivets for this, I'm just gonna use the rivet dies on my rivet press to press them. Just gonna insert this in. Try to keep the corset rings straight so they don't move around while you press it. And you just press it in place like that. Isn't that cute? And there you go. Now you have your little D-rings. So you can make this an itty bitty little crossbody wallet or you can make it a little wristlet. I'm gonna make a wristlet strap to go with this. But like I said, if you had like a chain or something, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. Okay, so now for the wristlet strap on the back side, I marked up one inch from one long edge. And it's hard to see, I know, for some reason my vinyl pen is not working. But I marked up one inch from the bottom edge here on the wrong side. Now I'm gonna grab my double-sided tape and I'm gonna add my tape right below that one inch mark along the center of my wristlet strap on the wrong side. And then you can take the paper off the tape and then fold that bottom edge that's one inch from the mark up to meet that one inch mark so it's wrong sides together and use the tape to hold it in place. So now you can use clips or you can use tape again, but we're gonna wrap the other raw edge down around to meet the fold on the bottom here. I'm gonna use tape again 
but I understand that's a little risky on my machine because it might make my needle upset. I'm gonna do my best to keep it right along the center. So maybe my needle doesn't catch it. So you can see I'm just putting it right along the center of the folded up edge, not the center of this entire strap. Hopefully it doesn't gunk up my needle. So then wrap that raw edge around to meet the folded edge on the bottom here and use the tape or clips to hold this in place. So it's a third of the width that it was when you first started. All right, we folded it in thirds, which I think is cute. If you have your own way of doing a wristless strap, you can do that. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along all edges of this wristlet strap at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Take your time here. And again, if you have any problems with this glue of the double-sided tape, gunk it up your needle, just grab um, a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a cloth and just keep the needle clean while you're sewing. And you shouldn't have any problems. All right, once you have that top stitch, you can just thread your swivel hook on one end and you're just gonna fold the end that's around the D-ring by about an inch and then fold the other end, and this other end is where I started in stopping my stitching, so I'm gonna hide that. So I'm gonna fold this back so it's back sides together on the wristless strap, and I'm gonna tuck it underneath that fold over. So you see I have the swivel hook, and I have the one inch fold over, and then I have the little tucked in other edge over here, so it looks nice and clean. And if you wanna you know, make it a less of a fold over or more, that's totally up to you. I'm just gonna kinda keep it like this. Let's see how far this is. So yeah, mine's just about an inch, so that's fine. So now I'm gonna grab a clip to hold this while I pop a hole in this. So I'm gonna go through all three layers, centered, making sure I'm catching all the layers. And this is gonna be for my rivet. So I'm just gonna pop a hole through all of that. I'm gonna insert my rivet, depending on your material, this could be a little thick. There we go. And then I'll grab my rivet press and just press down this rivet. And there we go, the wristlet strap is done. You can attach it to one of your little rings on your wallet. And how stinking cute is that? Isn't that a sweet, sweet wallet? I love this, so cute. I hope you love making it. Oh man, guys, I don't know which one I like more. Oh, I do, I know which one I like more. Look at those spiders. I mean, can you just? I know some people are kind of squeamish about spiders and I do apologize if you're like, I don't even want to think about spiders because they make me so upset. This is probably not the tutorial for you considering I'm using the spider vinyl. Uh, but this turned out so stinking cute. Look at this. And I love, I mean, I specifically chose different materials for the different panels because I wanted you to see that they were different. I didn't want you to get confused while we were building it, but I love that contrast. That's really fun. And then. <laughs> this is such a fun wallet to put together. And if you take your time and really, really focus on every single step, you're going to get it all to line up correctly. I think that's the hardest thing with all wallets, not, not just this one, with all wallet patterns, everything has to line up exactly. And if you, if you kind of rush through it, it's not gonna happen, you know what I mean? So take your time, really check every single step, make sure everything's lined up and where it's supposed to be. And it's gonna turn out pretty dang perfect. I think I am actually gonna edge coat this one because I just, this needs to be black, right? Mm. That is, this is just such a cool, cool wallet. So I hope you love making the mini Triscale wallet with me today. If you make one of these wallets or you've already made one, I wanna see it. So tag me on social media. I'd love to see your version. I think there's a lot of fun we could have with this. I think next time I might even put like another little ID pocket on the back here, like a little horizontal one so that I can like put something there too. I mean, it's not necessary. You already have enough pockets on the inside, but it would just be so cute. <laughs> I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.